what is going on radar force today we are starting a new series called the history of dragon ball media that will be covering dragon ball dragon ball z dragon ball gt dragon ball z kai dragon ball super uh manga vhs dvds mini dvds books comics graphic novels games anything you can think of that was released in north america that includes united states and canada anyways on today's episode of the history of dragon ball media we're going to be covering none other than the original dragon ball vhs i am going to do this one in two parts mainly because well the vhs have insane history so we'll be doing original dragon ball today and do dbz another time anyways let's jump right into it and let's begin so before we get into any official releases we need to talk about two vhs tapes okay so funimation's very 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 first physical release of a vhs tape was in 1994 it is Dragon Ball Curse of the Blood Rubies uh, sample VHS tape. It is the Harmony Gold dub version. This is the tape where Goku is not called Goku. He is called Zero. And a lot of other characters, their names are changed. I'm not going to go into that on in this video. That is not my expertise. My expertise is physical releases. The history of this tape is it was not released in stores. It was not released to the general public. It was only sold to stores like uh, VHS rental stores, anything like that, that could buy their products and sell them for them and, you know, bring in revenue for Funimation. This tape is one of the more sought-after tapes just because it is literally the first physical form of any Dragon Ball here in America or, or North America. Uh, so a lot of people seek this tape, thus it has tons of value. And, of course, it has tons of value because, you know, nobody really has ever seen the Harmony Gold dub. And this is, you know, the only way to obtain it, pretty much. And now it's been shared online, of course, but before that, yeah. <laughs> now, fast forward one year later, Funimation releases yet another copy of Curse of the Blood Rubies. This time around, it is Dragon Ball Curse of the Blood Rubies screener VHS tape. The artwork on the tape is actually what's going to be on the retail version of the 1996 Curse of the Blood Rubies. But... The dialogue from the Harmony Gold Dub is actually different than the 1994, but I believe there's no difference between the 1995 screener compared to the retail version. But in this version, Goku is actually called Goku and all of that. Um, I'm not educated on the dub changes, so quote me below if I'm wrong. But I believe the 1995 version is the same as the 1996 official release. And this type is pretty solid after two. Not so much as the 1994 sample. Obviously, this tape is still very sought after, but it's nowhere near the same level as the promo sample VHS tape. Now that we've covered the first two official Dragon Ball VHS tapes, it is now time to go into the first, the very first release of Dragon Ball that actual people like me and you could get access to and purchase. <laughs> Finally! Yep. You guessed it, Curse of the Blood Rubies. Bruh. Released on September 24th, 1996. But alongside Curse of the Blood Rubies, you also had two VHS tapes, which were Dragon Ball Secret of the Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball The Nimbus Cloud of Roshis, released by Funimation and Kidmark Entertainment. Those two VHS tapes contain episode 1 and 2 and 3 and 4. And of course, Curse of the Blood Rubies is a movie, so. And... Fast forward, one year later in March 25th, 1997, we get another three VHS tapes released. That would be Dragon Ball, Yamcha, The Desert Bandit, Episodes 5 and 6, Dragon Ball, Ox King on Fire Mountain, Episodes 7 and 8, and Dragon Ball, Boss Rabbit's Magic Touch, Episodes 9 and 10, also released by Funimation and Kid Mark Entertainment. And I also failed to mention that every tape up to this point has only been released in the edited format. No uncut. Fast forward another year later in July 28, 1998, we have the final VHS tape in the Saga of Goku, 
And that is Dragon Ball, The Legend of Goku, episodes 11 through 13. Only released in edited format also. And released by Funimation and Kidmark Entertainment. And that brings me to our first Dragon Ball mystery. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to say that every time there's a mystery, and my God, there's a lot of them. Oh, God. Here we go. Okay. So I'm going to really quick cover the Saga of Goku Dragon Ball VHS box set because I don't want to come back to the same saga that I was just talking about to talk about the box set. So fast forward all the way to January 22nd, 2002, the Saga of Goku episodes 1 through 13 Along with the Curse of the Blood Rubies VHS tape, they released a box set for these tapes, right? Okay, mystery time. Let's get into it. So, for the Saga of Goku VHS tapes, 1 through 5, and the movie Curse of the Blood Rubies, there exists a version of these tapes with the same dubbing, the same recordings, but they exist in a blue VHS tape, okay? So you may be asking yourself, what about the sixth tape? Well, the sixth tape apparently doesn't exist a blue tape. Uh, and here's why. Well, at least here's my reason why tape number six does not exist in a blue tape. Well, I have at least two versions in my head of why this happened. First thing goes back to the release dates, of course. So you have the first three that released in 1996. And then you have the next three released in 1997. And then a year later, they pump out the last tape, number six in 1998 and then like I said the box set was released way back in 2002 and I can confirm every single box set came with the regular black VHS tapes so that would mean the tapes released individually in 1996 through 1998 had to be released in a blue tape except for volume 6 which is weird but I still think the years 1996 and 1997, they were all released in blue tapes, mainly because they were released together. But by the time 1998 rolled around, maybe the production they were using changed to black tapes. And that's my theory. My second theory is, all the blue tapes were used in rental stores. Which I have seen a photo of a blue tape with a rental sticker on it. But that doesn't necessarily mean it's 100% fact. But it could mean that the blue tapes were only in rental stores. Now my third and final theory is all of the blue tapes were released specifically in Canada. And I'll touch on this later, but there's other releases of Dragon Ball Z that were uh, Canada exclusive tapes. But I'll touch on that later. But that could be a possibility. Now if you know the answer to this mystery, please let us know down in the comments below and we can put it to rest. But that's my little headcanon of the mystery of the blue tapes. Was it just the initial original releases that came in the blue tapes? And the 1998 and so on were just released in black tapes? Was this anything prior 1997 blue tape? I don't know. Let us know down below. But that's my headcanon at least, and that's what I stick with. So, whatever. Now, fast forward two years to January 18th, 2000. We have Dragon Ball Sleeping in Princess Devil Castle uncut and edited release the first time we have two releases of the same tape released by Funimation and no longer Kidmark Entertainment only Funimation nothing much to say about this tape other than the edited version is a lot harder to find uh, but yep yeah, that's about it but now we have another Dragon Ball mystery and not not really a mystery on this one there is a misprinted version of this tape and I'm just gonna sum it up really quick while I show an image on the screen of what the misprint looks like for both uncut and edited although I don't have a picture of the edited but it does exist I saw it but I'm just gonna sum it up really quick uh, I just think the misprint is just a very very early first print of the VHS tape where they somehow just released the unfinished artwork and then it was quickly resolved after that because well it's hard to find the misprint tape in uncut and it's really hard to find it edited i've only seen one copy since i've been collecting and i and it sold a day before so that sucks for me but yeah i mean it doesn't really matter because there's no difference other than misprint on the tape so eh mystery or not i'm just gonna call it a mystery all right fast forward 10 months 
in November 21st, 2000, we have Dragon Ball Mystical Adventure Uncut and Edited, released by Funimation. Yay! Nothing much to say about this tape, but it's movie number three, and it was released, and, well, we have it. All right, moving on. Fast forward a year later, in June 5th, 2001, we have the first tape of the Tournament Saga. That tape would be called Roshi's Request. Episodes 14 through 16, uncut only. No edited. Now, this is a turn of events. Uncut only. Before, it was edited only. Now, we're uncut only and no edited. Yeah. Gotta love Dragon Ball early days. Woo! Love Funimation. Now fast forward 14 days later, June 19th, 2001, the second tape in the tournament saga, Turtles Hermit Training, episode 17 through 19, uncut only. Yes, uh, that's going to continue for a good bit. Yeah, okay. And real quick, uh, I failed to mention that from this point on, every single mainline tape that has to go with the series, not movies, has spine artwork that completes an image when you collect all the VHS tapes. Also, another little side note, uh, bringing the uncut and edited thing back into it, the uncut VHS tapes have different spine artwork than the edited VHS tapes. But we'll touch on that later as well. You got, you, yeah, we, 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 you figure it out, you figure it out. It's, it's, it's a lot to take in, yeah, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, oh yeah, mm-hmm. Anyways, fast forward two months, August 21st, 2001, we have another tape in the tournament saga, tape number three, and that is called Fighters Begin, episodes 20 through 21, uncut only. Yep, okay, and moving right along. Okay, now, fast forward two months later, in October 23rd, 2001, we have the final two tapes of the tournament saga. Those tapes are called semifinals, episodes 23 and 25. And Dragon Ball Tournament Saga Final Test, episodes 26 through 28, uncut only. Now this concludes the five-tape saga of the Tournament Saga in the original Dragon Ball. Released by Funimation, uncut only. Anyways, that brings us to our next Dragon Ball mystery. <laughs> oh God. So, not so much a mystery, but why? Why were these released uncut only? To never go back and make an edited version when almost every other saga has edited and uncut? It's why? Let's get into my head cannon! <laughs> anyway, my theory to why these were never released as an edited format, well, mainly it's because, well, the first saga of Dragon Ball, not counting the saga of Goku, yeah, it was, it was not child friendly you know master roshi was just a pervert you know they would have probably had to cut a lot of content out and probably the episodes just probably was so cut that it didn't make sense to release them on a tape it probably this the plot didn't even probably make sense but that's just my theory just there's too much work to make an edited version of these tapes because of master roshi you know being a pervert all that good stuff <laughs> that's my head cannon anyways take it as you want uh, if you know any more information than I do, please uh, leave a comment down below. And that concludes this Dragon Ball Mystery! Now, fast forward two months. In December 26, 2001, right after Christmas, baby, spending your money, we got two VHS tapes starting the Red Ribbon Army Saga. The Hunt is On, episodes 29 to 31. And Red Ribbon Army, Silver, episodes 32 through 34, uncut only! Yes, great! Perfect! And now we're getting into another massive Dragon Ball mystery! Oh, I don't even want to cover this one, but my god, this is probably the most known and the biggest mystery of all, of all Dragon Ball, baby, all oh, love it, all oh, love it. We'll get right head back into it very soon, but first, we gotta finish up this saga. Fast forwarding, three months on March 5th, 2002, we have 
Oh, two more tapes of the Red Ribbon Army Saga. That is Assault on Muscle Tower and White's Last Stand, episodes 35 to 38 and 39 to 42. Ha, ha, ha. Okay, got it. Okay, these two tapes were released in uncut and edited. Wait, what? For real? Yeah, for real. What did you, did, hmm? did you understand what I just said? Because, um,. You just said the first two tapes of the Red Ribbon Army Saga were uncut only. And then you said the tape three and four were uncut and edited. But that goes back with on what I said earlier that uncut tapes have a different spine art than edited tapes. But yet this saga doesn't have the first two edited, but it has tapes three and four? Yeah, you heard correct. You heard correct. Congratulations. You can understand English. Yes, so... <laughs> oh, God. First, let's cover one more tape of the Red Ribbon Army Saga before we get into the Dragon Ball Mystery. Now, fast for two months. May 14th, 2002. We have three VHS tapes released, but I'm only going to cover one right now just to not confuse you any more than you already are. The first tape on that list is the final tape of the Red Ribbon Army Saga, and that is West City Chase, episodes 43, yeah, yeah, episodes 43 through 45, released in uncut and edited. But wait, no, that didn't actually happen? Welcome to this episode of Dragon Ball Mystery! Oh, no, 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 no. So a few things to point out here just to let you understand the scope of what I just said. There are five tapes fully released and uncut only that finish out the full Red Ribbon Army Saga. Image will be on screen now. You have The Hunt Is On, Silver, Assault on Muscle Tower, White Slash Stand, and West City Chase. Those five tapes were officially released in uncut and fully released, all five of them. The artwork is complete. But then... We have the three edited tapes that I mentioned. The first two, of course, we know didn't exist in edited at all, which were The Hunt Is On and Silver. We can confirm those two were never released, right? But if the uncut saga was five tapes and the edited only has three tapes, what would the image make? Would it be missing artwork? Well, no. Funimation just decided to, well, make a three tape artwork instead of a full five tape artwork, which makes sense in theory. Here's the image on the screen. But the, 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 the real mystery comes in, well, why were the first two not released and edited? Well, I, that goes back with the tournament saga, and I just think it's just, there was too much unchildlike things in Dragon Ball this time, so they just did not want to waste their time trying to cut a lot of content out, so therefore those two tapes just never came out and edited. And I think when they decided with White Slash Stand and Assault on Muscle Tower to make an edited release, they probably thought they had enough content that they could make an official edited release. That made sense. And so those two, they came out, right? But that leaves us with West City Chase, edited. We know the uncut exists, but the edited? Yeah, no, does not exist. You can tell me it does, but I won't believe you. So needless to say, I've been collecting VHS for a very very long time and when I started out all these forms all these lists claimed that West City Chase edited existed there's even a stock photo of the tape but there's stock photos of tapes out there that we know doesn't exist so it's it's not impossible for this tape to not exist since other tapes that were claimed to come out never came out and we can confirm they never came out but the mystery is people sw swore up and down that this tape existed and another tape, which I'll touch on later, but we're going to just talk about this West City Chase first. Uh, people swore up and down this tape existed, and after a decade of, you know, searching endlessly, I, I've come to find out it just simply does not exist. And if it does, well, I'll be shocked. But real quick, just to say... I've, people, the people that claim it exists do not have photo proof. They always just show me the stock photo. And stock photos don't mean crap to me because, like I said, I already know some stock photos of tapes do not exist. I'll talk about that later. We're just not there yet. But I just wanted to mention that unless you have a photo proof 
of the tape, the spine art, and all that, I won't believe you. And and yes, the photo that I showed on screen earlier is a custom West City Chase that I made for my personal collection to finish the missing artwork. And it's 100% fake. I, I have made those for myself and other people, but it is fake. And I have that on the tape. It has a watermark that says fan made. So that, that just to clarify that people watching this video, you're like, oh, well, I just saw it in your video. Then no, that's fan made. It's I made that on Photoshop and all that good stuff. But anyways, I scoured the internet so much and so far and to no avail. Now, I used the website Wayback Machine that archived old websites that have been shut down and you can actually look at certain timestamps of people that people saved of that website and I scoured the mess out of DragonBallZ.com or what you want to call the Z store for back in the day where you could purchase these tapes at and I went as far back as I could to see all the release dates of every VHS tape that I could but this specific tape was released May 14th 2002 so I went to the date closest to that and it was actually slightly before release date it said upcoming releases it said Dragon Ball West City Chase uncut only in parentheses it also had the other tape Underwater Hunt uncut only but every other tape that was released said uncut and edited and when I saw that that pretty much solidified any doubt in my mind that West City Chase or Underwater Hunt tape existed which I'll touch on the Underwater Hunt tape in a minute but it pretty much solidified my my head cannon that hey these tapes do not exist and for anyone thinking they still do you can literally find this on Wayback Machine it says uncut only if both versions were to be released why would they have put in parentheses uncut only Whereas when you go to other tapes, it says uncut and edited. So that's my proof that these tapes never were released in edited format. But the mystery still remains. Why did Funimation not release the edited versions of West City Chase and, and Underwater Hunt? Well, I still think it goes back to the contents of what's on the uncut tapes. It's just Dragon Ball had a lot of nudity and it probably just didn't work out. Long story short, it just they probably realized, hey, like we got to cut so much stuff out or it's a ton of work. Let's just release the uncut VHS only. Let's make our money and let's keep going because that's what Funimation did. They they were lazy back in the day. So, anyway, that's my headcanon on why they didn't come out, but I can confirm that they did not come out. Now, to continue on the tapes that were released on May 14, 2002. I accidentally spoke up wrong earlier. There was five tapes released on uh, May 14, 2002. Not three, but I'll go over it again. So the first tape, of course, was the last tape of the Red Ribbon Army Saga, West City Chase. Uncut only, although stated online, uncut and edited. We just discussed that. Now, the start of the next saga, which was General Blue, Underwater Hunt, uncut only, Although the way, although forms and people will tell you uncut and edited did not exist, like I said previously, when I went on the Wayback Machine, it said uncut only on their website, right? And then the very next tape, <laughs> oh god, welcome to another Dragon Ball mystery. So. There's a tape called General Blue, The Pirate's Cave. Um, yeah. So, there's a stock photo online of this tape. And the stock photo has the edited version in it. Uh, it's just a stock photo. There's no physical photo ever taken that we know of the show this actually released. And I'm 100% sure with, like with West City Chase and Underwater Hunt, edited they did not exist I'm a hundred percent sure and I'm a hundred percent sure of this tape as well on the Wayback Machine there was no mention of the Pirates Cave whatsoever so that already right there tells me it did not exist uh, but this I supposedly on on this thing I'm looking at right now supposedly says it was released May 14th 2002 but no it was not simply was not it's, it's not mentioned on the on the Z store via the Wayback Machine 
And what's also mentioned on the Z Store is the last two final tapes released on May 14th, 2002, which is General Blue, Lost in Penguin's Village, which is the fourth and final tape of the General Blue saga. But you may be asking yourself, well, you had General Blue Underwater Hunt, which is the first tape, and the, the Pirate Cave, which was the second tape, was never released. And then you just skipped to the fourth tape? Yeah, I did. The third tape was never released. And, uh, yeah, it, it just didn't exist. And, uh, so the two middle tapes just didn't exist, but yet Funimation actually went far enough to create a tape name for the second tape, The Pirate's Cave, which never finished releasing. Yeah, and, uh... Yeah, here we go, another Dragon Ball mystery! Yay! So I'm just going to start with the General Blue Saga uncut only, just to make this a whole lot easier on yourself. So, General Blue Underwater Hunt, uncut only, like I said, via the Wayback Machine, was only released in uncut. So there is a physical tape of that tape, but only uncut. Then the Pirate's Cave uh, never had a release, although stock photo online, never had a release, never mentioned on the Z-Store. The third tape had no name, no mention, just didn't exist but the fourth and final tape exists in uncut and edited, right? So here's the artwork online of what it would have been completed. But just keep in mind, that's only the first and the last tape that are official. Now going to the General Blue edited saga. Well, Underwater Hunt just didn't re just didn't release an unedited tape. Just did not. Even though stated online, it, but it didn't. So there's no artwork for that guy, no spine art. And we know the Pirate's Cave didn't exist, so no artwork. And we know the third tape didn't exist, so Funimation released the fourth tape, but this tape actually has spine art, but but yet there's no no other tapes to join along with it to finish the art because, well, they simply did not release. But what's weird to this is, is Funimation had to design all four tapes to know what the artwork would have ended like. So Funimation obviously had these tapes designed, but they just didn't come out? And that's the mystery. What what happened to this saga? I mean, uncut and edited, like, they just didn't finish it. What happened? I, I couldn't tell you. I, I really don't know. For the edited tapes, I can I know why... I, I'm pretty sure I know why Underwater Hunt didn't make it out because, I mean, Bulma's in her panties the whole tape. And all the episodes, they're in the cave and Bulma's in her panties. I mean, that makes sense to me. It's just a lot of stuff to cut out, like I mentioned on all the other cases. But uncut? Why, why didn't they finish the uncut? I don't know. Maybe you do. Go ask Funimation. I don't know. It's a mystery. It's really weird. I, but that concludes this mystery. Whew. Glad that's over with. Now, the last and final tape of May 14th, 2002 is the first tape in the Commander Red Saga. And that is Danger for Hire, uncut and edited. And if you're thinking there's a mystery coming, well, you're wrong, actually. It's smooth selling from here, actually, for a good bit. For a good bit, we're smooth selling. Kind of. So, this tape, fine. No issues with uncut and unedited releases, so. Good. Awesome. Great. We're doing good now. And now, fast forward one month, June 11th, 2002, we have the final two tapes of the Commander Red Saga. That is Corrin's Tower, episode 61 through 64, and... The Battle is Won, 65 through 67. Released in uncut and edited. Now, no mystery here, but there is one thing I want to mention, and that is the final tape of this saga, The Battle is Won, is where the edited tapes from this point on are insanely hard to find and insanely valuable. Now, there's only seven more tapes to cover in Dragon Ball plus one movie, but the last seven mainline tapes are the most insane tapes to find, and I call them the Seven Mythical Dragon Balls. But we'll get into that later. Now, fast forward one more month. In July 9th, 2002, we have the first two tapes of the Fortune Teller Baba Saga. That is Five Warriors, episode 68 and 70, and Yamcha's Fall, episode 71 through 73, released in uncut and edited Moving to August 27th, 2002, we have two more tapes from the Fortune Teller Baba Saga. That is Surprise Reunion, episode 74 through 76, and The Seventh Dragon Ball, episode 77 through 79. 
released in uncut and edited format. Now, fast forwarding two months, it is now October 1st, 2002. And the last two tapes of the Dragon Ball series is released. First tape being Fortune Teller Baba Goku's Journey, episodes 80 through 83, released in uncut and edited. Now, that concludes the Fortune Teller Baba saga. There's a total of five tapes, and the edited tapes are insane to come by. And like I said, the last seven tapes are the hardest to find, and the Baba saga has five of the seven. So having that artwork completed is really insane. And the second tape released on October 1st, 2002 is Tian Shinhan Tournament Day, episodes 84 through 86. This tape was released in uncut and edited, although when I was collecting, I honestly thought it was another case of West City Chase and Underwater Hunt, where this it just simply did not get released in edited format. But I looked on Wayback Machine, and I saw that when this tape was releasing, it had a listing for Tian Shinhan, Tournament Day, uncut and edited. And funnily enough, about a year later, I ended up finding this tape in a lot on eBay, and I swore up and down, like, it's got to be a, like a screwed up uncut version. I bought it, and sure enough, it was the edited version, and the spine art for that saga was finally revealed to the world what it could have been, because of course, as we all know, they never finished releasing the Tian Shinhan saga. Which brings us to our next Dragon Ball mystery! Oh god. Uh, not really a mystery, but... Why did they not finish the Tian Shinhan Saga? Uh, why did they not do the King Piccolo Saga? And why did they not do the Piccolo Jr. Saga? Well, a lot of people like to say it's because, well, VHS were dying out and, uh, you know, everybody was going to DVDs. But that's just simply not the case because Funimation didn't stop selling VHSs until 2005. And we're in 2002. So... Why did they just stop? I mean, my theory is just the original series Dragon Ball was just not selling well. And that makes sense because it is super hard to find some of these, the last seven edited Dragon Ball tapes. And that's probably because Funimation knew they weren't selling great and they probably only produced a few thousand, if that. Whereas the uncut, they probably released double. Let's say they, let's say the production of the uncut is they released 5,000 copies of each tape. And the edited, they might have only done 2,500 or, you know, 1,000. You know, just that's probably the case. They just knew they weren't selling well, so they just canceled original Dragon Ball VHS in, in general. I, I, I don't know, but that's my theory. I don't think it's because VHS were dying because, like I said, they released VHS of Dragon Ball or Dragon Ball Z and Dragon Ball GT and the movies until 2005. So it's like, that can't be the case, right? But if you know, let me know down below. But that concludes the series of Dragon Ball on VHS, at least the mainline series, and they stopped with the first tape of the Tian Chin Han saga. I guess, cool enough, the last tape, everybody wants to find Tian Chin Han edited because it's so, so, so rare. It's probably the rarest of all the edited tapes, but I have to give the Baba saga the win just because there's five tapes in that saga, and to complete the artwork is just so hard because you've got to get lucky five times, whereas Tian, you just got to get lucky one time to have the tape. So, yeah, that's that mystery. And that brings us to our last and final tape of the original Dragon Ball. Fast forwarding a year later, April 29, 2003, we have Dragon Ball The Path to Power movie released in uncut and edited. And there's nothing much to say about this tape. It, it was released smooth, nothing went wrong. Uh, both versions, I mean... What more can I say? The last tape of Dragon Ball went smooth. Uh, there is one more honorable mention. Released in 1991. And that is Dragon Ball The Magic Begins on VHS. I, I didn't want to include it on Dragon Ball Z or Dragon Ball GT because, well, it just says Dragon Ball. So I'm going to include it in here. And that will we'll leave the video off with The Magic Begins. Sure. Nice. While I was recording this, I remember that I actually had an old Z-Store magazine based in the early 2000s, before, right before 
they finished releasing uh, Fortune Teller Baba and Tien Shinhan and also Dragon Ball Z. They didn't release the Kid Buu Saga. But I, I remember I had this, and it also confirms my theories that I was showing you on the Wayback Machine archive of the Z store. So we'll quickly go through this magazine here, and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. That's sick. All right, so this is where stuff gets interesting here when in the order sheet. So we're going to focus on Dragon Ball only. So Dragon Ball, edited VHSs, volumes 1 through 6 of the Saga of Goku. Nice. Red Ribbon Army. Strange, there's only two edited tapes? Assault on Muscle Tower and White Slash Stand. Strange. General Blue. Strange, there's only one edited tape. Lost in Penguin's Village. Strange. Commander Red. All three tapes. Fortune Taylor Baba, Five Warriors, Yamcha's Fall, Surprise of Union, Seventh Dragon Ball. No Goku's Journey yet because it's not released yet. Movies, we have Curse of the Blood Rubies, Sleeping in Princess Devil's Castle, Mystical Adventure. No Path to Power yet because it didn't come out to 2003. This is, uh, this is 2002, an early 2002 magazine. Box set, only the Saga of Goku, that's correct. Now, uncut VHSs. We got the Tournament Saga, all five. Oh, what? Only five uncut? No tournament saga? Strange. Got all five of those. Red Ribbon Army Saga. Got all five of those. The Hunt is on. The Silver. The Soto Muscle Tower. White's Last Stand. West City Chase. Strange that we didn't see that up here. Strange, strange. General Blue. Lost in Penguin Village. Wait, what? No underwater hunt? That's strange. Because look, this is actually following the website now. On the website, after release date. Now, when I was looking at the Coming Soon page, it actually showed West City Chase and Underwater Hunt, uncut only, in parentheses. But every page I saw post-release date never claimed that West City Chase or Underwater Hunt existed in uncut or edited, which is strange. It's like something happened where they had to remove West City Chase and Underwater Hunt permanently from all of their pages. And this one might have just caught the... It might have been right before they had to do that because it's weird that they didn't mention Underwater Hunt, but they mentioned West City Chase. It's very strange. Now, moving. Commander Red, we have all three in the uncut. Fortune Trail of Bob, we have four of the five. Uh, Goku's Journey is not on here because it wasn't released yet. Same for Tien Shinhan. It's not out yet. No Tien Shinhan. And now for movies, we've got Sleeping in Princess Devil's Castle and Mystical Adventure. No Path of Power yet because it wasn't out yet. And no Curse of the Blood Rubies because it was edited only, wherever it's at. Right there. Very strange. Now, I'll show you something really cool at the end of this magazine here. And we're not going to look at Z. Now, this magazine, we got it at the perfect time because it does advertise the last two tapes, Goku's Journey and TN. Right here. Here it is. So, it does advertise. It says, Goku's Journey uncut and edited. Tournament day uncut and edited crazy and we know those exist we have them but just i would love to find an earlier 2002 magazine uh where they're like advertising west city chase and all that that would be really nice but uh yeah this is a uh, if anybody has these keep an eye on it because it does it does explain a lot as you can see right here <laughs> still advertising them for like upcoming releases here but uh yeah uh very cool stuff Thank you for joining me on this long journey of covering the original Dragon Ball on VHS. If you guys enjoyed this series, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And if you want to see more history, let me know because I do plan on covering DBZ and DBGT, all that good stuff, DVDs and all that. But um, I'll probably do Dragon Ball Z VHS next just because like, there's just so much history in the VHSs. Uh, but my god, there's a lot of mystery and crap with the DVDs too, as you guys know. So there's a lot more episodes to come. But anyways, guys, take care and thank you for joining me on the journey of Dragon Ball VHS history. Take care, guys. Peace out.